Welcome back to the Navani Center. We're action about to tip off between Bishop Newman and Wahoo. But before it does, bring in Jim Angeli with the NSAA. And Jim, you're here to talk about something important off the court. Yeah, we've got uh, a couple of student recognition award ceremonies this afternoon. During the Class A and Class D2 uh, finals, we're going to honor 18 of our believers and achievers, some of the best and the brightest students in the state of Nebraska. How do you get nominated for this Believers and Achievers Award? Well, Believers and Achievers, uh, you have to be nominated by your principal. And uh, the Class A schools are able to nominate four students. Class B schools are able to nominate three students. The C schools can nominate two, and the D schools can nominate one. And U.S. Bank, our premier corporate partner, which sponsors the program, then selects the 48 Believers and Achievers to be recognized. So what makes the grade here? What are you looking for in one of these nominees? You know, one of the things that, that has come up recently is we've been criticized for not doing enough for students by some people who are going to the unicameral and doing things and saying the Nebraska School Activities Association doesn't do anything good for students. Well, Believers and Achievers is our program that's been here for 12 years. We've recognized 576 students who are academically gifted. They participate in NSAA-sponsored activities, and they're also leaders in their school and leaders in their community. And it's great to have a premier corporate partner like U.S. Bank that's able to recognize students from Scotts Bluff to Omaha, from South Sioux City to Bankelman, from uh, Sioux County and Harrison all the way down into Fall City for their excellence and for their academic achievement. And they've given away over $48,000 worth of scholarships over the last 12 years during this program. So for those critics who say we don't do anything good for students, that's a lot of good things that we're doing for students. All right, thanks, Jim. You bet, thank you. All right, we'll be back with action from the Wahoo Showdown. Wahoo and Bishop Newman next. As I travel around the state of Nebraska, time and time again, viewers tell me how much they enjoy and appreciate NET's coverage of high school sports. Hello, I'm Jeff Beckman, Executive Director of the NET Foundations. It's an honor for us to provide you with coverage of high school basketball, wrestling, swimming and diving, football, bowling, and rodeo to every home in Nebraska. And none of that would be possible without the individual support of viewers like you. Hi, I'm Jenny Herstein, and as NET Membership Director, it's my job to make sure that we make a meaningful connection with our supporters, above and beyond our broadcast and broadband services. That's why we created the NET Sports Partners Club, to say thank you for supporting the work we do year after year. Enjoy the satisfaction of knowing that your support makes NET Sports Action possible, along with these other benefits of joining the Sports Partners Club. You'll receive a wide range of sports gear and memorabilia, and you'll receive exclusive invitations to pregame events throughout the year, an insider's look at NET Sports through our e-newsletter, and you'll receive that special invitation to the Sports Partners Club Breakfast hosted by Adrian Fiala of NET's Big Red Wrap-Up. And with gifts of $80 and above, you'll also receive the NET member card. Now after a winter like this, baseball season just can't hear, get here soon enough. Become a member right now and we'll see you at the Sports Partners Tailgate Party on April 18th at Haymarket Park in Lincoln. The Husker baseball team plays Kansas. That's the day after the red-white football game. So if you're coming into Lincoln for that, extend your stay and enjoy a full weekend of Husker sports. I hope to see you there. Go to netnebraska.org slash sportspartners and reserve your season ticket for the best sports coverage in the state right in your own living room. NET is honored to have received two awards from the National Educational Telecommunications Association for excellence in public broadcasting. NET News received first place in the News and Public Affairs category for Electing a President, Nebraska Voter Diaries. And for the Corporate Promotion category, NET was recognized for the Reach, Connect, Inspire campaign. NET commits to bring quality local programming to Nebraska and the nation. This fall on PBS, director Ken Burns changes parks. Don't miss the all-new 10th inning of baseball. Coming this fall to NET1.
The Class C1 Championship is the Battle of Wahoo. Now I realize the folks at 1011 and NET, we do these things because, well, we love to do it. We love the ratings as well. We anticipate we're going to get 100 share of the TVs <laughs> tuned in Wahoo. The problem is there may only be three or four TVs turned on in Wahoo because everybody is here. That's why DVR <laughs> is so big these days. <laughs> no doubt about it. What a matchup. Two teams who obviously know so much about each other. They grew up with each other. It just makes for a fantastic story when you consider the great legacy of basketball success in Wahoo, Nebraska. Absolutely. That is something that that town is so proud of is their basketball heritage at both schools, the public schools and then the private schools, Bishop Newman. A lot of people expected Newman to be in this contest, but when Wahoo won their semifinal yesterday, everybody saw what the potential was. And of course, we have the two teams, Bishop Newman and Wahoo Public. And you would expect these two teams played in the regular season, but also played already in the postseason. The matchup is one and one. The rubber match is for all the marbles, the state championship between the Wahoo Warriors and the Bishop Newman Cavaliers. Back with the starting lineups and the tip off right here on NET in 1011. Soy biodiesel from Nebraska soybeans lowers our dependence on foreign oil. It has properties that reduce engine wear. And it burns without harmfully polluting the atmosphere. The Nebraska Soybean Board encourages the use of soy biodiesel. Programming made possible by Time Warner Cable. Inspiring young people to build the skills they need in science, technology, engineering, and math to become the problem solvers of tomorrow. Time Warner Cable, the power of you. You can see it on the horizon. Nebraska's landscape is changing. Wind has been a part of Nebraska Public Power District's generation mix since 1998. NPPD supports the development of wind power generation in the state, but wind is variable and does not produce electricity 24-7. Other generation resources like coal and nuclear will remain necessary. Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us, together with your local public power utility. Bishop Newman and Wahoo High. And if you're wondering, yes, outside of a Lincoln versus Lincoln or an Omaha versus Omaha, no one has been able to find in the history of either boys or girls state basketball a time where a town has been represented by two schools in a basketball state championship. And when you consider that Wahoo is about 4,000 people, Pretty impressive that both schools were able to make it this far through the schedule. Yeah, right? and very competitive Class C1. And great for uh, both fan bases, and you know, there are some crossover fans in that town, believe it or not. People who are pulling for both Bishop Newman and Wahoo. The last one out today, hit the lights. I don't even know if we need starting lineup introductions. <laughs> These two teams know each other so well. Let's go across the way to Doc Weiniger. We'll let you meet him. Starters for the visiting team, the Bishop Newman Cavaliers. Number 10, Antonia Rada. Number 20, Sophie Yarger. Number 32, Tessa Clyde. 
Number 34, Morgan Molly. Number 44, Melanie Bloom. Number 52, Brittany Carnahan. And number 54, Kayla Mika. And now, the non-starters for the home team, the Wahoo High School Warriors. Number 11, Sydney Hancock. Number 13, Darcy Berry. Number 25, Kayla Bennett. Number 35, Jessica Berry. Number 41, Sam Granjanette. Number 43, Caitlin O'Brien. Number 45, Paige Ott. And now, the starting lineup for the Bishop Newman Cavaliers. A 5'9", senior number 12, Alexis Woida. A 5'9", senior number 14, Holly Fuyan. A 5'6", senior number 22, Kelsey Morrissey. A 5'11", senior number 40, Mackenzie Fuyan. And a six-foot junior, number 50, Alyssa Stunyak. Head coach for the Cavaliers is Rick Arns, assisted by Jason Simons and Bob Brandt. And now, the starting lineup for the Wahoo Warriors. A 5'6", junior, number 15, Maddie Murren. A 5'7", sophomore, number 21, Sadie Murren. A 5'4", junior number 23, Aaron Walker. A 5'8", junior number 31, Morgan Hancock. A 5'9", junior number 33, Emily Brodal. Head coach for the Warriors is Linda Walker, assisted by Wes Kramer, Jenny Wagner, and Amber Remmers. Today's game officials are Steve Atkinson, Shane Bach, and Phil Sievers. And now, ladies, let's play Basketball! Well, Class C1 broke down like this. Wahoo and Bishop Newman both making it here to the state championship game. Wahoo with a decisive victory on Thursday against Southern Valley. And Lutheran High yesterday survived Lutheran High yesterday. Bishop Newman had a tough time with uh, St. Cecilia for a little while and then pulled away from Carney Kaplan. And this may be the most unnecessary map in the history of the state tournament. <laughs> They're both from the same town. But you can see the brackets again. Wahoo and Bishop Newman advancing. Now, Wahoo won the sub-district final, which allowed them to get here. Newman got here via the wild card. But it was Newman who won the regular season matchup. And we're off. And the player said yesterday, we're friends off the court. When we're on the court, different story. Fuyan. The less celebrated of the two. Holly Fuyan, no, no bad basketball player in her own right, averaging six points and two rebounds a game. Mackenzie Fuyan's the one where people are going to probably get to know her a little bit more uh, down the road. Very good basketball player and someone who's been here for the last three years as a premier player on two state final teams. You say down the road, literally down the road. She's headed down uh, I-80 to play for Creighton next year. Signed and committed. This game has some star power. Not only Puyan, but also Alyssa Stanyuk. She's considering D1 offers of both basketball and volleyball. This is Mackenzie Puyan. Boyda looks underneath, and Stanyek will have to kick it back out. They run a nice little weave on the right, and the layup just a little too shy, and oh, down hard on the back of her head goes Stanyek. She hit hard. 
She appears to be okay. That's one thing you always worry about when you come down on your back, your head hitting off the hardwood. We'll see if we can she see She didn't her. have either of her hands to help catch her fall or brace her fall because they were both tied up going up for that rebound. They just got caught in all those limbs. Wahoo had a couple of arms in there too. So Stani can't fall, but she's up in play. Yeah, the ponytail was the only thing that broke her fall. <laughs> So a hard first minute here, no score. Now Wahoo has a sister act, Sadie and Maddie Murren. But then Aaron Walker takes the attention away and drains the first jumper of the game. Two nothing in favor of the Warriors. Despite the great basketball tradition at Wahoo High, and it's boys, the girls, this is only their fourth state tournament in history. And they have never made it to a final until this year. Outlet pass down the floor. Layup is a little too strong. Offensive rebound had a chance for a putback. And Newman will keep it after the missed opportunity for Wahoo. You can tell there's some pretty high energy on the court right now, John. I know we're not even two minutes into this contest, but you can tell emotions are running a little high right now, and both these teams are pretty amped to be on the floor. This is where championship experience comes in handy. Newman, their third straight championship game, lost two years ago to Norfolk Catholic, but claimed victory last year, 49-38 over Bennington. Stanyek with the pass down on the blocks, draws the foul, and she will have free throws coming up. And that's going to be something Newman's really going to emphasize throughout the contest, I would expect. Stanyek, six foot tall and a tremendous post player, and the two players trying to defend her, they're 5'8 and 5'9, so she's got three and four inches of size down there. And even talking to Coach Arns from Bishop Newman before the contest, the one thing he said, I like our chances mainly because we have some matchup problems for them. I think that's exactly what he's talking about. Stanyak, though, only goes one for two, and she is a name that's going to be very important because she got into foul trouble in the sub-districts, and Wahoo was able to take advantage and win. But in the regular season matchup, won by Bishop Newman, she poured in 26. So number 50, the offense runs through her. Three-point shot is good by Sadie Mirren who averages about a point less than her sister, but she is the first of the sister act to score. It's 5-1, Wahoo Public. Down through the lane, Fuya. That's a D1 player right there. That's a pretty tough move, a spin, and she put that shot up with half of her body still back to the basket. Yeah, she's got to, if there's one thing you notice about her, she's got great body control. She leans the right way when you go in. She's gonna be a nice player for head coach Jim Flannery and the Blue Jays. Down low underneath. And a jump ball is going to be called. Bishop Newman has the possession arrow. As you take a look at Rick Ahrens, the head coach of the Cavaliers, his fifth season, and in five years, three championship games. Not bad. Pretty good track record. There's a lot of coaches who would give to have that. Absolutely. By the way, that championship last year was the first in the history of Bishop Newman. This is their fifth championship game appearance. Two others happened back in 84 and 85, where they lost both times to Battle Creek, and one of the star players was Wahoo's head coach, Linda Walker, who at that time was known as Linda Schnitzler. Eddie Mirren. All right, beg your pardon. Eddie Mirren was on the defense there. Bishop Newman has tied it up at five. We'll see with the bucket for Bishop Newman. We're tied up by five. Strong on the little runner inside, but Wahoo's got it back from the baseline. Jump shot is good. Morgan Hancock. You know, Wahoo has a lot of weapons on the floor. They don't have the one player who really stands out. I know the Murren sisters are pretty good at 15 and 14 points per game. But it, along with both Maddie and Sadie Murren, you have Aaron Walker, Morgan Hancock, Emily Brodo. You can go down the list. They're a pretty balanced team, I would say. Nice save inbounds and good play for Morgan Molly to keep the possession alive here for the Cavaliers. Stanyak's going to have to chase this one down. Fuyan, baseline, tried the reverse lap and called for the travel. Picked up her dribble just a, about one step too early, got caught underneath the bucket, and was whistled for travel. The Battle of Wahoo so far, led by Public, 7-5.
live coverage of the 2010 NSAA State High School Basketball Championships is brought to you in part by Southeast Community College offers more than 50 technical and academic transfer programs. Train for a new skill or retrain for an existing one. SCC provides hands-on learning. One Oak Energy Marketing. Natural gas from One Oak. The one in energy. Concordia University, Nebraska is a Christ-centered community ready to prepare students for a life of leadership and service. Where futures begin, community colleges, Central, Metro, Mid Plains, Northeast, Southeast, or Western Nebraska Community Colleges. this Wahoo battle, but both schools in the town of Wahoo, not necessarily all the players from that town. Though Bishop Newman, just one starter from the city limits. It's Alexis Woda. She's number 12. Look for her. As you would expect, a lot of the Saunders County surrounding communities, especially those kids of the Catholic faith, will go to Bishop Newman. So it is interesting that though the school is in Wahoo, and it's been a rough year. I was talking to the folks from Wahoo Public yesterday, and there are still some bus routes. Even though we've had some good weather this week, there are still some bus routes where they can't get the buses through because of all the snow that has been piled up. Is winter over yet? Uh, it's getting close. <laughs> but you know what? We have one more rite of passage, and that's next weekend. As soon as we get past Boys thing. State Tournament, we're going. We, it always seems like there's another storm that makes its way through during state basketball. This week was great. Two of the nicest days of the year. Hit 50 yesterday. So, uh, and we were inside. Go figure. Yeah, no kidding. But as long as we can stay clear next week, we're going to be okay. It's going to be smooth sailing after that. Newman down by a deuce here. A look inside, and the entry pass was denied, but they're going to call the hold on Emily Brodahl, who has drawn the assignment here on Alyssa Stanyak, but Brodahl gives up a solid four inches. As you take a look at Linda Walker, as I mentioned, the former Linda Schnitzler, her father, one of the great coaches in the history of Nebraska athletics. Bob Schnitzler led Battle Creek to championships in girls basketball, good football coach as well. Little runner by Fuyan is no good. Yeah, Coach Walker even talked yesterday Memories of a lifetime. You'll never forget him in 25 years exactly is when she got to celebrate here on the Devaney Center floor. And she did it two years in a row, both times against the Newman Cavaliers. Three ball on the way. He is good. Sadie Murin with her second three bomb, and it's a 10 point or a 10 five, five point lead. You know, Wahoos really seems to be in control of this contest right now. They've had some nice jump shots go down. And I just get a sense that the Warriors have the tempo in their favor. Stanyak so far has not been as effective underneath as a result. Having to take the long jump shot was Fuyan drawing in. Will she draw the charge? No, nope. no charge. It's a blocking foul and two free throws coming up for Sadie Murin. As we watch, Rod is going to be called a personal. Look like she was definitely there and ready, but I think she's going to get the call. She just turned her body a little bit more right as the contact was about to come. You saw her open up that right shoulder and that right side of the hip a little bit just to try to maybe brace that blow. It was enough for the whistle to be called a block, not a charge. Now you ask any basketball referee, it's the hardest call in all of sports for an official. The charge versus the block. You always look at are the feet set, and sometimes if the feet are set, then you look at the body. What well, you know. And that's how out of control was the offensive player. There's so precisely. many ways to dice yeah. it down. And and you know, it's a long time misconception that you always have to be set to draw the charge. That's not always the case. Nice look underneath. It's a good pass from Fuyan to Tessa Klein. Klein. Contact made, she'll shoot free throws. Here's the look. Look how wide open that lane is. That's a good job of emotion offense for Bishop Newman to just have moving parts all around and open up some gaps. That high time it happened to be right in the paint. Kayla Bennett, though, misses. Or Kayla Bennett was 
who the foul was on, but the first free throw missed by Klein. Klein, a senior, averages three points, three rebounds a game. And the lead is six for Wahoo. Yuren looks all the way across the floor for Walker. And they'll call the block on the floor. Had some mustard on that pass. I mean, that's a dangerous pass to go corner to corner in a half court set. But she had some zip on that to make sure it got there. Just like with the boys' programs back in the 80s, girls also taking advantage in the town of Wahoo of the Wahoops program. But one thing that has differed this year is Newman has their own youth program now that they have started. So you wonder if the same cohabiting and the same intermixing of kids will end up at public and end up at Newman will be the same as they were in the past. A lot of these girls were teammates of each other on youth teams until they went to high school. And the keeps the pass possession a lot. Go ahead, Ken. Now there could be a bit of a divide in that because you almost have to make your commitment early, a lot earlier than high school as it used to be. Long two, short by Rada. Foul's going to turn it around the other way. It's on Newman off the missed shot. Under a minute to go. Wahoo has led most of the way at 12 to 6. And they've really controlled this contest. It, it, you just get, get a sense that they're in their flow. They're playing their style of basketball. Newman in their half court sets, they, they really haven't gotten a lot of dynamite looks. We saw Fuyan create a really nice bucket for herself, but outside of that, the offense hasn't been overly impressive for the Cavaliers. But the defense is always dangerous. The steal by Puyon, the feed down the floor. And crashing down hard is Antonio Rada. After the steal, all the way back down, Sadie Murin going for the steal. She's whistled with her first. Under 40 seconds left in the period. A look down low and bounce it home. Alexis Oida. And that was a good dribble drive by Holly Fuyan to break down the defense. Solid bounce pass. Sometimes bounce pass the best way to go in tight quarters. That's what she did and it paid off. Stanyak and Mackenzie Fuyan not on the floor right now for the Cavaliers getting a break here at the end of the first period. And Newman has a chance to make it a one possession game here before the end of the first. Kelsey Morris, he had it for a moment. Now to Klein. Holly Fuyan. Wide open, long look, no, from Rada, and that will do it for the first period of play. So, Wahoo, eight minutes in, has a four-point lead. This is for the C1 championship. Hey, college doesn't just happen. You have to push yourself as you go through high school. Don't be afraid to take classes like Algebra II, Biology, or a foreign language. They can help raise your ACT score and prepare you for college. I wasn't the smartest kid in high school, but I took the top classes and I passed. So what are you waiting for? Push yourself over to your counselor's office and sign up for them. They won't be easy, but you'll be glad you did. We'll now proceed to the first item on the today's agenda. Log on to anytnebraska.org slash capital to stay connected to what's happening in your state government. Nebraska Capital Live brings you daily coverage of important decisions from Nebraska's courts, legislative hearings, and events at the governor's office. In the office or at home, you can always stay informed with Nebraska Capital Live at anytnebraska.org slash capital. The Newman student body wearing just about every combination of basketball jerseys ever made at that school. <laughs> Good thing Thor Tripp didn't have one of those on for the 10-11 promos. <laughs> I want to thank Southeast. <laughs> that was getting one that fit. Yeah, get, get him one that fits. Start of the second half, or second quarter. Wahoo leads it by four. Walk. Matty Murren. So Newman was trailed pretty much throughout. 
has both Mackenzie Fuyan and Melissa Stanyak on the floor. Stanyak, they look for the post lob. Wow, was that shot had to be partially yeah. deflected up in the air for it to go that high. There's an extra hand on that. It was almost created a backspin on the basketball. I think it just kind of popped out of there. Cavaliers will keep the ball. And when everyone went with Stanyak, the ball went to Royda, but she missed them both. It was a nice job of recognizing that the defense was collapsing on Stanyak, and Royda was left alone underneath. Unfortunately, missed them both, and then a foul. Yeah, both defenders just kind of followed Stanyak to the near side block for us. And that left that. It was a wide open shot. Two looks at it, and none went down. And Wahoo has the basketball. I also want to give credit to Wahoo's Sadie Murren. There's been a couple times she's been by a Bishop Newman player that's fallen down, hustle play, getting after the basketball. Murren both times has been right there. Great sportsmanship helping them out. Deflected. Fuyan with the steal. Will she finish on the offensive end? No, too strong. Good pursuit by Wahoo. And again, no fast break points there. Tipped away. And again, good defense this time by Holly Fuyan. The 5'9 juniors, you take a look at head coach Rick Ahrens. Timeout's going to be taken right here by Linda Walker, his counterpart. Down the way for Wahoo. That'll be their first timeout burned. Newman has yet to exhaust any of their times out. You think Wahoo's season has been so fun so far, getting into the state championship game after yesterday's big semifinal win? What's up the road could be even more enjoyable. This Warriors team, which is now 21-4 uh, on the year, zero seniors. They'll be back. And consider that their losses this year came to teams who all qualified to the tournament. We mentioned one of the losses to Bishop Newman in the regular season, but they also lost to Gretna from Class B, Lincoln Christian, a Class C1 state tournament qualifier, and Seward. Both these schools losing to Seward this year. The behemoth of Class B, who we will see next try for their 50th straight win and second straight state championship. Yeah, three of Wahoo's four losses came to teams playing in the finals. This is Sadie Murin. They're gonna stay back, noted for their 1-3-1 zone defense. See that a good portion of this game. Aaron looking for a shot. Here's Aaron Walker. Wahoo looking for every opportunity they can. Good defense so far by the Cavaliers. Baseline runner is off the mark. That's a fantastic defensive set by Bishop Newman. And good patience by Wahoo, too. But overall, I think the Lady Cavaliers have to be very pleased that they were able to exhaust a lot of energy. Prevent Wahoo from putting any points on the board. Stanyak trying to back her way in. She draws a crowd as you would expect. A high lob it and too high, but a push from behind by Brodahl. And that's probably a break for Newman because I think the pass was too high to begin with. I don't believe the shove from behind had any effect on whether or not Stanyak was going to come up with that ball. Either way, the foul's on Wahoo. It'll be their ball when we come back. Newman trails by four in the Class C1 championship. You're on vacation in the mountains. You've got the kids, the dog, and your tent. Your son says hiking is lame, so you try rock climbing. It ends up being harder than it looks. Now you're in the hospital wishing you'd stayed home. But you've got Blue Cross and Blue Shield, so you know you're covered, even though you're out of state. So you relax which is why you went on vacation in the first place. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska. One less thing to worry about. Programming on NET television is made possible in part by U.S. Bank. Across Nebraska, the nation, and everywhere in between, U.S. Bank provides financial, trust, and investment services to individuals, large corporations, and small businesses. Wherever you go, whether it's in person, on the phone, or on the World Wide Web, you'll find U.S. Bank. You'll find more than 50,000 U.S. bankers 
home of the five-star service guarantee. Jim Tenniper on the right, the executive director of the NSAA, and the governor, Dave Heineman. As we get back to live action on the inbound, Stanyak with the two plus one. They peeled Stanyak right off a pick from one post, one block to the other. Good pass. She went straight up with it the second she caught the basketball at the button with the foul. But miss the free throw. By the way, first field goal for Stanyak. Here now, we have crossed the noon hour this afternoon. She's got three. She averages 16 and a half points, eight rebounds a game. Yeah, big day yesterday, 22 points in the Cavaliers' win over Carney Catholic. Yeah, she absolutely took control over another fellow All-Stater, Katie Sokolowski. Mm -hmm. Long three. Here it comes up short, and the rebound is stunned with And now Newman can either tie or take the lead. Momentum's really starting to swing, I think, and that's all because Bishop Newman has done a better job on the defensive end of the floor. Wahoo's gotten a few looks, but they're not the wide-open shots they were seeing earlier in the contest. Wahoo, as you would expect from a smaller team, will play some predominantly zone as well. Baseline jumper to tie the game for Morgan Molly. Six zero run here by the Cavaliers. Actually, I believe it's a seven zero run at one point, wasn't it? Not twelve to five. I believe it was. Wahoo has been held off the scoreboard here in the second quarter. Kind of a slow 7-0 run, but a run nonetheless. Three is short. Offensive rebound, though, for Maddie Murn, but she is called with a double dribble. I think she was going to switch hands on the dribble and happen to get both hands on the basketball at the same time. Double dribble, so Newman will take possession tied up 12-12. And the Walker hoping to find some offense out of the Warriors here in the second period. to full court defense applied by Wahoo, but Newman gets it across. Looking for the lead. Three. A little short by Morrissey. And a foul on the rebound and Mackenzie Fuyang. I believe that will be her first it is. Mackenzie Fuyang. Six. And that is the sixth the team foul. She's just going after the rebound, but the first person to get her hands on it was Maddie Murren. She's the one who fell to the floor. So again, Wahoo still looking for some points here in the period. We've seen their lead cut to nothing. Sadie Murren. Way up high and an air pass. Fuyan up ahead. The Fuyans look to get her and the land is good. Good ball moving back and forth between Hamu and Mackenzie Fuyan. And the Cavaliers have taken the lead with a timeout Wahoo. Newman has roared back here in the Class C1 championship game with under three minutes to go before. Programming on NET television is provided in part by NPPD, Nebraska Public Power District. Applauding the dedication, teamwork, and sportsmanship of Nebraska high school athletes. Nebraska Soybean Board, encouraging the use of renewable biodiesel fuels for a healthier environment. For information, nebraskasoybeans.org. Time Warner Cable, inspiring young people to build the skills they need in science, technology, engineering, and math to become the problem solvers of tomorrow. Log on now to Nebraska Stories Online, the place that gives you more insight about the people, the places, and the ideas of Nebraskans. Log on to netnebraska.org slash Nebraska Stories for extended video clips, articles, and information. Nebraska Stories and more now on the web. Here's how the Fuyans run the break at Bishop Newman. And that has.
has given us our first lead change of the game. Wahoo has been held, Kevin Suits, without a field goal for nearly a full period. Their last field goal came at the 236 mark to play in the first. We are at 257 to play of the second. And they haven't gotten many shots off in that time. It's either been a turnover, and when they have got a shot off, it's likely resulted in a Bishop Newman defensive rebound. So a few second chances for the Warriors. There was some confusion there out of the timeout. Newman was trying to sub in Stanyak. But I think they tried to get her to, to the scores table a bit too late. And Aaron Walker breaks the scoreless drought with a three-pointer from the right corner to give Wahoo the lead back at one. I think that's all the Warriors needed was just another shot to fall. Hopefully that should loosen them up just a bit. Walker averages seven points a game. She has five here in the first half of this championship game. Entry pass was nearly taken away, and the shot was blocked. Aaron Walker making the play on the defensive end as well. Wahoo wants to move it quickly if they can and not let the Cavaliers settle into that 1-3-1. Murray will come inside, but not too much English on the shot as the ball rolls off the rim harmlessly. Two minutes to go in the first half. Kind of hung on the rim. I thought it was going to spin in, but you saw it. It was kind of got a weird rotation. and just rolled right off. And a flat shot too, a low angle shot. Did not go down. They look inside. Mackenzie Fui on a lot of contact underneath. Murren got turned around completely on defense, and somehow Newman didn't have an easy look at the basket. That'll be a foul. And it's losing her balance was Maddie Murren. It really wasn't a foul of effort or a foul of intent, more of a foul of accident as looking We've seen a few of those fouls here this game. We saw McKenzie Fouillon going after the rebound, just an incidental contact. She was whistled for a foul, so it's like we're going to shoot free throws the rest of the way in the half. It's the front end of the one and one after the 17th foul, and it's missed. So with 90 seconds left in the first half, there's Morgan Hancock. Newman reaching in and forcing the ball to change hands. Ali Fuyan. Low scoring game here so far. When you look back at what these teams did earlier, it was a 55 to 50 Wahoo victory in overtime in the sub district finals. And in the regular season finale, a 64 to 56 Bishop Newman victory. So the score definitely down here in this state championship. Not surprising, it usually ends up that way with teams that are familiar with each other. Well, at this point, they, they know each other's tendencies. And, um, speaking of tendencies, that's how Bishop Newman knows they can get some points on the board. Stanyak with her second field goal. It's a five-point effort so far this afternoon for Stanyak, and Bishop Newman has the lead back. 40 seconds left in the first half. Great ball rotation by Wahoo. Absolutely. Working it all the way around. Offensive board and the tie-up possession arrow stays with Wahoo Public. Did you see that, John, how they worked yes. it from one wing to the key to the other wing? A little bit of a baseline drive. Kick it to the other corner. Just great rotation. They're waiting for an alleyway to break open in that Bishop Newman zone defense and then attack. So good job by Wahoo. And I'll see if they can get some points. There are alleys to be had, but you have to be decisive and crisp with your passing. Runner, no. Offensive board, foul, and free throws. Fuyan with a foul. Aaron Walker to the free throw line. And that is her second. Walker with five points, three rebounds. First one ties it. 17 foul on the Cavaliers, by the way. And the Warriors take back the lead. So another lead change. And I presume the Cavaliers will hold for the last shot. Of course, they got to get into the front court first. And now they have numbers, at least momentarily. They'll go inside. Stanyak, turn around. Tally. I was 
honest with you, John, I thought they were going to hold for the final shot, but if you have Stonic down in the block one-on-one -on -one with a good height advantage, might as well go for it, because now Newman has the lead and a chance to tack on one more. Absolutely. I mean, good job by Stonic turning toward the hoop side. She could have spun towards the other side. Had she done that, she would have ran it to another defender, so good presence to know which way to spin and put up the shot. Make it a two-point game, and she does, 19 to 17. Now, Wahoo presumably will get the final shot. They look to the corner, open is Walker with five. Ball knocked away, still loose. He's going to come out of there with it. Bishop Newman, and that's it. So the Cavaliers take a two-point 19 to 17 lead in a game that has featured five lead changes. All of them have come in the second quarter as Wahoo ran into a scoring drought, only scored five points in that period. And Bishop Newman will carry that advantage into the locker room. And we will hear what the head coach of Bishop Newman has to say as we head down courtside now to Dan Hedman. Dan? Coach, obviously the defense was key in the second quarter. What will you do in the second half? Well, we're going to continue to do some of the same. Uh, we're mixing up a little bit defensively just to try to keep them off balance. They're very good offensively, and so we just got to make sure that we find their shooters and contest shots. Right, good luck in the second half. Thank you. As we go to halftime, it's Bishop Newman leading 19-17. We'll take a look at the first half when we come back. You can see it on the horizon. Nebraska's landscape is changing. Wind has been a part of Nebraska Public Power District's generation mix since 1998. NPPD supports the development of wind power generation in the state. But wind is variable and does not produce electricity 24-7. Other generation resources like coal and nuclear will remain necessary. Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us, together with your local public power utility. You're on vacation in the mountains. You've got the kids, the dog, and your tent. Your son says, hiking is lame, so you try rock climbing. It ends up being harder than it looks. Now you're in the hospital wishing you'd stayed home. But you've got Blue Cross and Blue Shield, so you know you're covered, even though you're out of state. So you relax, which is why you went on vacation in the first place. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska. One less thing to worry about. Hey, college doesn't just happen. You have to push yourself as you go through high school. Don't be afraid to take classes like Algebra 2, Biology, or a foreign language. They can help raise your ACT score and prepare you for college. I wasn't the smartest kid in high school, but I took the top classes and I passed. So what are you waiting for? Push yourself over to your counselor's office and sign up for them. They won't be easy, but you'll be glad you did. Programming on NET Television is provided in part by U.S. Bank, committed to customer service through performance, products, and people. U.S. Bank, proud sponsor of the Nebraska School Activities Association, member FDIC. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska, one less thing to worry about. Education Quest Foundation, improving access to college through scholarships, grants, and college planning services. I think that the mission of NET, which is educational programming, whether it's radio or television, it's a very important thing uh, with funding cutbacks in, in public schools and other areas. The gap in education is growing and NET becomes even more important in those areas. Through a significant gift to the NET endowment, Steve Keen is ensuring that NET will educate Nebraskans for generations to come. Call me personally if you'd like to consider making a gift to the NET endowment. were sent out and votes were cast by the coaches in Class C1 and this is the 10-11 coaches All-State team. It starts with well, Bishop Newman. They have two players on here. Alyssa Stanyak and Mackenzie Fuyan. We're seeing both of them today and some pretty good supporting cast there too. Mallory Weaver, Emily Max, and Kenny Sokolowski. Yeah, the Central and West represented by Emily Max of Gothenburg and uh, Katie Sokolowski as we mentioned earlier played yesterday in the 
uh, state semifinals for Carney Catholic. Unfortunately for the Stars, they suffered defeat yesterday, didn't make it back here. And then you've got Mallory Weaver, another semifinalist. So four of the five players got their teams into the semifinals. A really good year in uh, Class C1, led by, of course, those two standouts for Bishop Newman, who so far have their teams up or have their team up 19 to 17. Wahoo did a good job of containing Stanyak, especially in the first quarter, but we started to see Stanyak assert herself a little bit more in that second period. Yeah, I think Bishop Newman went back to what, what they thought was going to have a lot of success in this ballgame, and that was work inside through Stanya because that's where the mismatch is. And when they went to that, that's when we saw Newman go on a nice run in the second quarter as they lead by two. Bishop Newman 19, Wahoo 17, back with the first half highlights and numbers as we continue from the Devaney Center on NET Sports and 1011. Programming made possible by Time Warner Cable. Inspiring young people to build the skills they need in science, technology, engineering, and math to become the problem solvers of tomorrow. Time Warner Cable, the power of you. Thank you. Can I help you today? Uh, no thanks. I'm just looking. Oh, this is cute. <clears throat> so? You wouldn't do it there. So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. Like they're the fashion police. <laughs> Programming on NET Television is provided in part by NPPD, Nebraska Public Power District, generating electricity with a balanced mix of energy resources, including wind. Nebraska Soybean Board, encouraging the use of renewable biodiesel fuels for a healthier environment. For information, nebraskasoybeans.org. Time Warner Cable, providing cable, internet, and digital phone service for your home or your business. Welcome back to the Bob Devaney Sports Center. Bishop Newman with a two-point lead here at halftime as we take a look at the first half statistics. And you'll see Bishop Newman with four field goal attempts. And they've made a few more as well. But three-pointers, Wahoo's got all three in this game, and that's part of the reason why the numbers work out as they do. Warriors with more rebounds than the taller Bishop Newman Cavaliers. Thought that was interesting. Wahoo also has turned it over more eight more times than the Cavaliers as we take a look at some of the first half highlights. And for Wahoo, they were led in the first half by Aaron Walker and Sadie Murren. Walker with the long two. And then it was time for Sadie Murren to pour in two of her eight points. She's got eight to lead scoring for Wahoo Public. For Bishop Newman, well, as you would expect, Mackenzie Fuyan, a big part of what has happened so far here, along with Alexis Moida. But the difference, and the reason why it's a two-point lead is because of that play right there. Looking down low for Alyssa Stanyak. She eventually made the free throw to complete the three-point play. And it's Bishop Newman leading it by two here in a game that has featured five lead changes so far. Back with the Battle of Wahoo, the second half after this. Programming on NET television is made possible in part by U.S. Bank. Across Nebraska, the nation, and everywhere in between, U.S. Bank provides financial, trust, and investment services to individuals, large corporations, and small businesses. Wherever you go, whether it's in person, on the phone, or on the World Wide Web, you'll find U.S. Bank. You'll find more than 50,000 U.S. bankers, home of the five-star service guarantee. Programming on NET television is provided in part by U.S. Bank, committed to customer service through performance, products, and people. U.S. Bank, proud sponsor of the Nebraska School Activities Association, member FDIC. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska, one less thing to worry about. Education Quest Foundation, improving access to college through scholarships, grants, and college planning services. Celtic Thunder, it's entertainment. And he's a bad, bad. Miles in a 
Celtic Thunder in an unforgettable concert performance. USA. Celtic Thunder, it's entertainment. Sunday night at 8 central time on NET1. Welcome back to the Devaney Center where Bishop Newman leads Wahoo 1917 at halftime. Coach, down by two points. What'd you tell the girls in the locker room? I told them in the locker room there was times in the first half that we forgot to attack. They like to play that nice one three one nice and wide. We need to attack those gaps, find the right open girl to get it to, and nail the shot. All right, uh, just real quick, the key down the stretch, one, one thing you could point to? The key down the stretch is to contain Mackenzie Fulion out front, not let her penetrate, and also own the boards and keep uh, Sonic out of reach from her shot. All right, good luck. Thank you. It's a two-point game at halftime. We'll be back with second half highlights after a break. You can see it on the horizon. Nebraska's landscape is changing. Wind has been a part of Nebraska Public Power District's generation mix since 1998. NPPD supports the development of wind power generation in the state, but wind is variable and does not produce electricity 24 seven. Other generation resources like coal and nuclear will remain necessary. Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us, together with your local public power utility. Soy biodiesel from Nebraska soybeans lowers our dependence on foreign oil. It has properties that reduce engine wear. And it burns without harmfully polluting the atmosphere. The Nebraska Soybean Board encourages the use of soy biodiesel. Programming on NET Television is provided in part by the Dr. Tom and Dorothy Hallstrom Inspire Nebraska Athletics Endowment. We just got a, an uh, eyewitness account of what it feels like outside. <laughs> Is there any way we can pop the top on this place? I mean, I realize they're going to do some renovations here at some point. Maybe it'll be replaced by a new arena. We don't know. But my, my only open request roof. Is That's what you want. Open huh? roof. Why not? Beautiful day outside. And let's see, let's see if you but, feel. Would you have felt that way last year when we had the major snowstorm come no. through? Nope. Not at all. That'd be a problem. Not at all. For the folks, most of them in the town of Wahoo, they are inside as well, here at Devaney, as their two schools go at it. Mackenzie Fuyan right off the second half, will take it in and draw a foul. And that's ironic, because that's the one thing Linda Walker said was going to be key in the second half was containing Mackenzie Fuyan. We see the first few seconds of the half, Newman goes straight with Mackenzie Fuyan. That is the fourth foul, talking about sneaking up on you, on Emily Brodal. Rodal, a fourth foul here, just 11 seconds into the second half. And that's really unfortunate because she's one of those key defenders on Stanya. Well, we'll see how that changes the dynamic just a little bit. Stanya has eight points. Really didn't start to come alive until the latter stages of the first half. Newman with a three point lead. Drive in. There was contact, but no whistle. You know, we talked earlier about that charge block call. I think the reason there was no whistle there is because it was so far underneath the hoop. You know, in the NBA, they actually had that little semicircle ring, and I think that was basically what the decision was down to for the official. It was a little too far under the hoop. Let's, it's, it's no call. The basket's good. Let's lead back down to one here. Stunya taking advantage. Not having Brodal out there. Brodal on the bench with those four fouls. And Stanyak has now put in her ninth and tenth points of the game. 
And I think that's a good utilization of the halftime for Coach Rick Arns to basically say, let's get back to what we think is really going to work. McKinty, Fuyan, and Stanyak. That's one and two the ways they start this half. Tried to hook a pass down low, and here comes Newman. Fuyan by herself. Oh, what a hustle. Good hustle. She's going to be called with a foul. Will Sadie Murren forget the foul? That was yeah. just impressive to play catch up with an all stater running the floor and knock the ba basketball away. Look at her chase. We didn't never give up on the play. Yeah, she was quite a ways back there, too. Shooting two shots. Make her earn it at the free throw line. She'll be halfway there. Mackenzie Fuyan now with six points. You know, Fuyan actually struggled in that first half. She was five of eight from, from the floor but is now getting a few more points to her name. Last year, she had 14 points in the state championship victory over Bennington. And two years ago, as a sophomore, she had nine points in the state championship game loss to Norfolk Catholic. Fumbled away underneath the basket, and Wahoo turns it over. That is their 12th turnover, just two turnovers in the first two-plus quarters for Bishop Newman. And they lead by five. That's their biggest lead of the game. Hop step, travel. And just as I say it, there's a turnover against the Cavalier. Tends to work out that way sometimes, doesn't it? You know what we also haven't had in this game? A dunk. So now you're, now you're just asking for it, aren't you? You think you can play that card? <laughs> Now, Wahoo needs to find some points here. Crashing hard to the floor, and again, officials swallowing the whistle here in the third quarter. And Wahoo gets the benefit of the two points. But right back down the floor. Way to run the ball down the floor with good passes. And a timeout's going to be taken by Newman as they go back up by five. And they'll try to keep this momentum here after the timeout. Now, this game has really picked up some pace right before that 30-second timeout called by Bishop Newman. You know, we saw this thing go up and down the floor. Not so much the case in the first half. The first half, we saw, saw a lot of half-court sets and, you know, just some very disciplined play on both sides. Not saying that this is undisciplined, but we're seeing each team push the tempo just a bit. And Let's I go down that, to Dan Hedman. Dan? Guys, I'm joined here by a very special guy. It's uh, Jerry Johnson, the mayor of Wahoo. In the first half, you were rooting for Bishop Newman. You've switched alliances now. Uh, Got to be neutral today. Got to be neutral. It's a winning event, whatever it is. Now, what can you say about the turnout? Basically, your whole town is here. Right. Uh, people asked me yesterday who's watching City Hall, and I said, who's going to come into City Hall? Everybody should be down here. It's a Chamber of Commerce event. There's no question about it. Did you all, all carpool down here? Uh, no, I think... Uh, People come down at various times because they like to watch basketball. A lot of them come early and stay all day. Wahoo's a basketball town. All right, well, thanks for joining us. All right, Jerry Johnson, mayor of Wahoo, guys. Well, obviously, being very political there, not wanting to take sides, always the smart thing to do. First half, he was sitting with the Newman fans. Now he's over with the blue and yellow. And Stanyan now with 14 points. It's really been how Stanyan goes is how Newman goes in this series with Wahoo. And she is starting to come alive here offensively. After the miss three, Fuyan. Yes. And she didn't have numbers there and still went with it and scored, so that's pretty impressive. And so Wa yeah. for Wahoo, there's not much you can do about that, but get back. And you can credit Wahoo for getting back. It's just Fuyan made a play. What really led to that was it was a long rebound, and that gave an All-Stater pretty good position. Well, I think what you're seeing here is the presence of two All-Staters really making a huge difference here. As Caitlin O'Brien, her second straight. See, now Linda Walker is saying, get back, get back on defense. And count it. Newman has decided, I think, at timeout. Usually you see a timeout in that circumstance, and they want to press. They want to try to get a quick turnover and an easy bucket. But I think the presence of that timeout, the message by Rick Ahrens was, listen, 
Let's go to number 50. Let's make Wahoo commit to her. And so far, Stanyak has responded. She's already got 16 points in this game, considering that she was held to just three points in the first quarter. And a timeout's going to be taken here by, I believe it's by Wahoo Public. With a seven-point game, chance to make it eight, which would be the biggest lead of the game so far. And somehow Wahoo's got to find a way, and I got to believe that in doing so, they need to find their three-point shot. They made three of them in the first half, but the problem is they haven't really had much luck with it since. And quite frankly, when you're a smaller team, you've got to be able at some point to shoot over the top of that one three -way. Yeah, they've got shooters up and down that the lineup. There's no doubt about that for the Warriors. They just got to continue to work the ball around the perimeter and make sure they're getting shots. At this point in time, when you're down by seven, you really have to eliminate turnovers. You got to make sure you're getting shots off every time you possess the basketball. So here comes. Melissa Stanya. She has nine points in this quarter. And Bishop Newman enjoys their biggest lead at eight points. We'll be back with more of the C1 championship game in a moment. Please consider joining fellow public television supporters by naming NET Television in your estate plans. When you meet with your advisors, ask about ways you can create a legacy gift to benefit NET Television. Your support will sustain your heritage of giving far into the future. Call me directly or visit our website for more information. But my Daniel O'Donnell celebrates his 10th PBS special, showcasing two decades of career highlights. Daniel O'Donnell shares the sounds and the beauty of his homeland. Love sick fool that's blind and just can't see. Coming Sunday, March 14th, beginning at 3.30 Central on NET1 and NET HD. Plus, find out how you can get tickets to his concert in Omaha. celebrate a state championship with nachos, ice cream, and Miley Cyrus. <laughs> That's Elkhorn Valley. The D1 champions taking the first title game. This is strange, John. Miley Cyrus is on the loudspeaker here at the Venus Center. I even saw some grown men across the way in the Wahoo crowd with their hands up. I'm going to stop the video. Here we go. And now they're chanting USA. We're going to stop our Miley talk. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> right now, Wahoo needs some talking from their offensive stars here. Talking about Sisters Murren or Aaron Walker. That shot was blocked. And you are seeing Bishop Newman now take command of this basketball game. I'm going to give a lot of that credit to head coach Rick Ernst. I think that he's done a fantastic job settling his team down, letting them take control of the tempo. We saw a couple times out of timeouts and out of the halftime, really regroup his team, direct them in, in the right way, so you get the ball to Stanyak. He's done a fantastic job, and especially now, I think he's really preaching to his team. Defense, defense, defense. That's the way that we can really keep Wahoo at arm's length. Meanwhile, for the Warriors, they really have to start attacking the basket, kicking out, trying to find an open shot. Now, 1-3-1. One, one. They like to extend it out as well. Walker's got an open three after good ball movement. Offensive board, no! And a save, good play! Matty Murray, Sadie Moe cannot finish in a foul. Yeah, these shots are just not falling for Wahoo. I mean, they're even getting second looks there. It's not like they didn't have opportunities after this nice save, but still unable to finish. And Linda Walker right now, her team cannot buy a bucket. Yeah, no, Brian did the right thing there on the stick back. She kept the ball high and went up with it quickly to try to get it into the rim before there were Bishop Newman arms all around. Just unfortunately, the shot did not go down. 
nice recovery by Wahoo to deny the entry pass to Stunyan, who looked like she was about ready to go in with an easy layup. Sadie Murren and Lampkin. Great ball and body control by Sadie Murren. Seemed like her body was a bit ahead of herself. And then Sadie with the tip away, the steal, the pull up Jay. He's gonna have it. Bishop Newman. Look at the Murrens just flying around the floor right now. Crashing into camera people. Hitting the hardwood. That was a great play by Maddie Murren just to hang tight. As the ball, it looked like it was going to come up the floor. You see the replay from Sadie's good ball from body control and laying it in. That was the break earlier. 33-27, Bishop Newman by six. But another opportunity. Leon misses. Now, Sadie Murren wants to run again. Looks underneath. Oh, Wide open. Fantastic. Yeah. When she pulled back, when she stopped, I think she kind of put Bishop Newman to sleep. They thought that she was really just going to put the brakes on and let for everybody to come. But just at that instant, that lane opened wide open. And Caitlin O'Brien, who essentially is playing because of the foul trouble of Emily Brodahl, has responded. O'Brien with six points. She averages three a game. Four-point Bishop Newman lead, and they are going to be content to hold the ball probably for the last shot. Some clock here as Morrissey and Mackenzie Fuyan play catch with it. Now the move will start towards the basket. And anticipated and stolen away by Hancock. Here comes the layup. She's fouled hard. And you could almost argue that that was intentional. The fact of the matter is the foul is going at the basketball, so I don't think you can really make that call. But what a just. That's just a great play, great defensive play by Hancock just hanging back. I think she was anticipating that the whole time that the clock was running and at the right time broke on the basketball. And quite frankly, maybe a little bit of laziness by Newman. They were just casually playing toss. And one thing that Hancock was able to do was look at the clock at the opposite end of the floor. And she knew that at some point that pass was going to be made towards the basket and anticipated very nicely. And now, because of it, Wahoo has climbed back into this game. They trail it by three. The battle for Wahoo is the battle for the C1 State Championship. Eight minutes. Join the Sports Partners Club because sports partners like you make NET Sports Action possible. Nebraska, we asked and you delivered. You gave us good cooks, treasured recipes, and celebrated family stories. I'm Chef Brian O'Malley, your host of NET's program, The Recipe Box. Join us as we celebrate the culinary heritage of Nebraska through its food and its cherished stories that make us savor the taste of home. Coming March 20th at 2 Central on NET1 and NETHD. Plus, find out how you can meet the cooks and sample the recipes from the program at the new Institute for the Culinary Arts in Omaha. As we head to the fourth quarter, Wahoo trails Bishop Newman 33-30 in the C1 championship game, but no panic in the Wahoo huddle, guys. Linda Walker just telling her team, be relaxed, you're right where you want to be. This is attainable, and it's just a one possession game. All right, thanks, Dan. John Bishop and Kevin Suits here courtside for the final eight minutes of the Class C1 championship game. Ball tipped around, and it's going to be a hold. It'll be on the floor. That is the 
believe, the 15 foul. No, I beg your pardon. It's on. Uh, it's the second one on Newman. Just the second foul. As we said in that third quarter, a lot of crashing to the floor, a lot of body contact, but the officials pretty much have swallowed their whistles here, letting these two teams go at it, and go at it they have. Off the break, down the floor, and that's a reach-in. Matty Murren, and that will be her second. That's the 15 foul against Wahoo. Only two against Newman here in the second half. Bishop Newman has led here in the second half. They took a 19 to 17 lead at halftime. It was a big third quarter for Bishop Newman. That's what it appeared to be. Wahoo made a nice run there late in the quarter. Three is short, but no one was home for the defense to get the rebound. And because of it, we've got free throws upcoming. As Emily Brodahl has just fouled out of the game. She picked up that fourth foul in the early. first of minutes of the uh, third right. quarter. It was early, early in the third quarter, and now, similarly, fourth quarter. And we mentioned offensively how Caitlin O'Brien was able to come in and take up the slack there, but at the same time, Stanyak was able to roll up a nine-point quarter individually. Now 10 points here in the second half with 18 as you take a look at Brodahl, a 5'9 junior is done. Already disqualified with five fouls. Both free throws are good. Stanyak with 19, Bishop Newman with a five point lead. Sadie and Maddie Murren at the top. They look all the way across and Stanyak! She doesn't just play inside, folks. She can extend those arms and be very active on the perimeter, and she just forced a turnover. Yeah, Linda Walker was not too happy with that pass either, going all the way across the court, especially knowing that they have those long limbs of Stanyak out there on their defense. And Stanyak with two more. She's really taking over this game, John, especially in the second half, the huge third quarter, and now she's adding a few more in the fourth, up to 21 points on the game now. Three on the way. Yes. Huge three for Wahoo to take back some of the momentum. And then she takes it away, all the way home for the layup, and it's good! Maddie Murren with the layup. And they are roaring on the purple and gold side across the way. Back with more in a moment. You can see it on the horizon. Nebraska's landscape is changing. Wind has been a part of Nebraska Public Power District's generation mix since 1998. NPPD supports the development of wind power generation in the state. But wind is variable and does not produce electricity 24-7. Other generation resources like coal and nuclear will remain necessary. Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us, together with your local public power utility. Soy biodiesel from Nebraska soybeans lowers our dependence on foreign oil. It has properties that reduce engine wear. And it burns without harmfully polluting the atmosphere. The Nebraska Soybean Board encourages the use of soy biodiesel. Back at the Devaney Center, a 5-0 run by Maddie Murren has put Wahoo right back in this game. A three and then a steal off the make and a layup. And Wahoo has trimmed the deficit back down to a single possession here with under six minutes to play. Looking down low there, Stanyak, but this time it was tipped out of there, but it does roll back into the hands of Holly Fuyan, who then rolls the shot down. It was good crash defense on Alyssa Stanyak, and they had it right but they just didn't get the fortuitous bounce of the basketball. Timeout. And a timeout for Linda Walker and Wahoo now. They have burned 
four of their five timeouts. They have one left in the final 5.26. Yeah, that could be pretty big because the way this is turning out, it's going to go down. To Programming made possible by Time Warner Cable. Inspiring young people to build the skills they need in science, technology, engineering, and math to become the problem solvers of tomorrow. Time Warner Cable, the power of you. Programming on NET television is made possible in part by U.S. Bank. Across Nebraska, the nation, and everywhere in between, U.S. Bank provides financial, trust, and investment services to individuals, large corporations, and small businesses. Wherever you go, whether it's in person, on the phone, or on the World Wide Web, you'll find U.S. Bank. You'll find more than 50,000 U.S. bankers, home of the five-star service guarantee. You're watching NET One and NET HD. Warriors to inbound, down by four. Maddie Murren, run a little bit of the weave and a hold. That's only the third foul of the second half against Bishop Newman. And beyond Alexis Oida. Just her first. No one, as you would expect, in any real foul trouble for Bishop Newman. As we mentioned, Emily Brodahl's already fouled out. And Katie O'Brien has three. O'Brien with the jumper and the offensive rebound. And Murren wants to go in strong. Kicks it out for an open look. Walker for two. No. That was, a, that was a great look, though. Good offensive set to penetrate, kick. Walker had a clean look, and the shot just didn't fall. I mean, for the game, Wahoo's shooting 39%. They'd like to see that a little bit higher. They're a pretty good ball shooting team, just some of their shots today have not gone down. 39 35. Nice look underneath from Stanya to an open Woida, and it's back to a six point game. So the timeout has helped settle things a little bit after Wahoo had closed it within two. Newman content to let Wahoo Public shoot from the outside, which can be dangerous at times, but not there. And they're going to call a foul on the floor, and it's going to be on Skanyak. Yeah, you can hear the, that the Newman fans are not too happy with that. It was a hustle foul. I mean, a couple bodies on the floor. I think the only thing that you can maybe make of that is officials, for the most part, have really let the kids play in the second half. And that was maybe the one time where they did blow the whistle. Stanek with 21 points. It's been a very consistently officiated game. You know, you would think, as much as we've talked about Stanek and her presence underneath on offense, she just has three rebounds. And Wahoo is actually out-rebounding Bishop Newman by seven. That's bizarre considering the height advantage for Bishop Newman. Absolutely it is. 41-35 is the most important stat belongs to the Cavaliers. They lead by six. Patty Murray. Ball is knocked around. Sadie Murray comes up with it down underneath for O'Brien. Yes! Good job by Wahoo to know that Newman had drifted up the court and to go back the other direction and put up a quick shot. That ball was knocked around, and that, again, another one of those hustle fouls, if you will. Aaron Walker saw that the ball was deflected, was going for it, and made contact, and that is the seventh team foul against Wahoo Public, so it will mean one and one free throws coming up for Bishop Newman's Kelsey Morrissey, who has two points here. She averages nearly seven a game. Wahoo's been right there throughout this entire quarter. Just right on Bishop Newman's heels. Makes them both. Lead is back up to six with under four minutes to play. This is the rubber match of the year between these two schools, and it's for the state championship. Lost it off her knee, somehow retrieved. 
Skip pass all the way across the floor. And then back again. Murren sisters work together. Manny Murren for three. You knew they were due. So they've had a couple shots, couple threes fall down here over the past few minutes. We got ourselves a ball game. 43 to 40. Looking for a steal. Bodies falling all over the floor, no whistle. Cavalier fans screaming for the foul, won't get it, three minutes to go. It almost be argued that the foul could have gone the other way. McKenzie Fuyon had that forearm out just a little bit to keep some distance. And are we gonna have a foul or a walk? I thought one official was gonna say foul, and now they're gonna discuss it. It is a travel. The, the, the official back behind the baseline looked like he was calling foul. The official kind of behind the play, back out beyond the arc on the sideline, immediately whistled for the travel. The travel is the deciding call and a turnover against Bishop Newman. Manny Murray to tie. No, but the offensive rebound and a foul. Now it's going to be on Stanyak, and that's number four. No, it won't. No, they won't get Stanyak. It's on Morrissey. I thought it was going to be on Stanyak. I thought it was going to be on Stanyak myself, too, because that was the first thing I thought of when they blew that whistle. I thought it was going to be on Stanyak. And number four, that's the bigger importance there. Yeah, she was straight up trying to block the shot. Morrissey and must it have was slid in. And got the, yeah, Morrissey's got. Yep, there it is. Good call. Good yeah, call Stanyak was the on the backside straight up. Morrissey had the arm in. She was just trying to reach in and slap the ball yeah. away. The two free throws. Converted by Hancock. Here's the full court press by Wahoo. One point contest. This is kind of what we expected, folks. Into the front court. Ali Fuyan and timeout. Timeout taken by Bishop Newman. Let's set the game reset for you. They have two timeouts remaining. Wahoo has only one. Possession arrow right now belongs to Bishop Newman. They still have a foul to give before Wahoo Public goes to the line. But Wahoo has already put Bishop Newman into the one and one bonus with 17 fouls. We talked about Emily Brodal, who has already fouled out of the game. Nobody else with more than three. So again, that call and the correct call by the officials keeping Alyssa Stanyak from being that first player with four fouls among those key starters. Yeah, and that would be the one player you'd be really concerned about if you're Bishop Newman because Stanyak, she leads all scores right now with 21, and you really need her in there right now for rebounding purposes because you have to figure Wahoo's going to really try to settle into their typical offense, work the ball around, and let's get some jump shots. If those jump shots don't go down, that's where rebounding becomes such a huge factor in this situation right now. I know like, Wahoo actually holds the advantage on the boards right now for the ball game, strangely, but you got to figure rebounds are going to be really, let's wipe that stat out right now and put it 0-0 because rebounding is going to be so key. You know, for Bishop Newman, if they want to hold on to this lead, they're going to have to limit Wahoo to just one chance each time they have the basketball. John Bishop, Kevin Suits, Dan Hedman, our entire NET Sports and 1011 production crew here for the state championships of girls high school basketball. Down to the final two minutes and 15 seconds, and they're going to call it travel. You know, you could have gone about three different ways. A held ball, a walk, or an over-the-back foul. Yeah, but credit O'Brien right there on the backside of Stanyak to just stand her ground and disrupt the basketball just enough to get Stanyak a bit off her uh, game right there. She shuffled her feet. Caitlin O'Brien has really played a very solid basketball game, having taken over for Emily Brodahl, who has fouled out. She has scored eight points and then got the ball back for her teammates who go in for an opportunity to take the lead, but a charge is called on Morgan Hancock. That's her second. It's team foul number eight. No free throws, however. Because it was an offensive foul, as Alexis Woida will check in. Down to the final tense minute and 49 seconds. Bishop Newman going for back-to-back -back titles. Wahoo trying to win their first girls state basketball title against their crosstown rivals. Mackenzie Fuyan, talk about someone who really has been kind of silent here. Only nine points in this game. She averages 14. Well, she really hasn't had the transition opportunity she would have liked, I don't think. Steinek. No! Murray comes down with it. Will she take it in? 
She'll back it out. Three for the lead is short. But the offensive board in the put-back row, they're not going to say no shot, no shot. Fouls on the floor. And that is the sixth foul on Bishop Newman. So it is no free throws here. The foul called on the floor and before the attempted shot. However, still, Wahoo with the possession and a chance to take the lead back, something they have not had since late in the second period. Look at Bishop Newman, arms up, really going to try to close down those passing lanes. Coming up on a minute to play. Got to watch those long arms, especially Stanyak at the top of that 1-3-1, one, one, and there's those hands in the way again, but stolen right back. Aaron Walker. They look for an opening. Nothing doing, and a foul. Now we're in the one and one so Hancock will go to the free throw line. Mackenzie Fuyan just tried to force the issue. She tried to hurry the basketball up the court when there really was not a need for that. And that's where Wahoo is hanging back, read the pass. And we've seen it quite a few times in the second half. The Warriors make a break and they get a steal. Ali Fuyan with the foul. That's her third. And now at the free throw line, a one and one opportunity for Morgan Hancock. It's tied. Fourth time today we have been tied up. Linda Walker telling her team, let's just. Settle down, stay composed. Wahoo has taken the lead. The sixth lead change has handed the lead to the Warriors with 45 seconds to go. It's been a long road back to the lead, but they have accomplished it. Mackenzie Fuyan up ahead, three on the way for the lead, and he gets the friendly carom. Kelsey Morrissey has put Bishop Newman up by two with 30 seconds to go. An unlikely player to take the shot in that situation, but Morrissey does the trick. What a big shot by Morrissey. I was even wondering, is it going to be Fuyan or Stanyak in that situation? She was open. What confidence to put, put that shot up, and it rolled around and went down Newman back in front. Especially considering when you would think, in a situation like that where you need just a two to take the lead, that who else do you go to? You go to Stanyak, you punch it down underneath. But the confidence there, and Morrissey from the corner, wide open, as we take a look at it one I mean, more she time. she sized it up when she was, when the pass wasn't even in her hands yet. You could tell she was thinking about the shot with the open look, and she drains it. By the way, this timeout taken by Wahoo, they have none left. 25 seconds left. Bishop Newman, meanwhile, has two timeouts left in their pocket to use if they so choose. So where do you go here? Wahoo has the basketball down by two. You got to figure it's one of the Murren sisters, you would think. But I'm sure Linda Walker is saying right now, let's just make sure we get a shot off. We know they're going to have those long arms. That zone's going to be what we're facing. Let's just take care of the basketball. The one thing we cannot afford to do is to turn the basketball over. Because if we at least get a shot up, we can maybe scrap our way to the rebound, maybe get to the free throw line. Let's just keep the ball in our possession. If we have a tie-up, the arrow is with Bishop Newman. Here we go, the final 25 seconds, looking for an inbound. Gets it in. Murray from the corner for the lead. No! Rebound comes down to Morrissey. And now time running off the clock, and they need to foul and do. And that will send Mackenzie Fuyan to the line. And that was a good shot. Yes, I mean, it was. That, that, it just didn't go. That was a great look. And you know, that's almost a shot you want in that situation if you're a Wahoo, because that's one of your strengths. That's what gotten you into this game. Great perimeter shooting. It was open, it just did not fall. This is a one and one. Here's Mackenzie Fuyan with nine points. No! 15 seconds left. A two to tie it, a three to win it. Who's gonna take the shot? Sadie Murin up no the timeouts. No timeouts left. They've got to do it right here. Sadie Murin looking all the way in. Takes it in strong and ties the game. Two seconds left. We're going to play overtime. What a crossover by Sadie Murin. And look at the Wahoo bench and the fans. Look at that screen out as well. And who did it? Kate 
Caitlin O'Brien, who has played a masterful game. Watch this screen out here. She screens out Sonic and opens up the hole. You got to give credit as much as you want to give it to Murin. Make sure you credit Caitlin O'Brien, who has played a fantastic game in a situation where she had to come off the bench. Well, Murin created some separation about 18 feet from the hoop, and that's where I was impressed with that crossover to get Mackenzie Fuyan a bit backed off, and then she attacked, she went toward the hoop, so the other half of that score was O'Brien screening out Stanyak. Clean look at a layup. I was really expecting a jump shot of some sort, but if that lane's open, that thing pieced together perfectly for the Warriors. They capitalize, and of course, when you have a big rivalry at a high-stakes contest, we're going to play extra. Let's go to Dan Hedman before we start the overtime. Guys, obviously all the momentum over in the Wahoo huddle. Coach Linda Walker stressing to her team, we've been here before, we've played overtime, and we've won. That game was against Bishop Newman. We've got another one right now. O'Brien and Stanyak will jump center to start the extra four minutes. Now remember, a lot of times out of halftime, quarters, timeouts, we've been really impressed with Bishop Newman and the way Rick Ahrens will set something up. Let's see what he's got drawn up right now. Stanyak, who has been on 21 points for seemingly quite some time now. And what you usually find in these overtimes, especially early on, some of these possessions can be very deliberate, just trying to get that advantage. Stanyak looks underneath. She'll go to the line to try to put Bishop Newman back in front. Again, when the Cavaliers have extra time to regroup and think about what they want to do, you can tell they're so disciplined. And they probably followed exactly what Coach Arns wanted to do to a T. Work the ball around the perimeter. Wait till you have a good entry pass. Get it into Stanyak and see what she can do. One to the line. That's her 22nd point. Rick Arns. Well, he's had to sweat out a couple of these. Remember two years ago, leading Norfolk Catholic most of the way. Lost it in the fourth by just two. Last year, it wasn't quite as dramatic. They had Bennington under control in the fourth quarter. Ball tipped away, knocked away. Good play by Holly Fuyan to force the turnover. The 17th turnover on Wahoo. And even though that is a turnover, they have really cleaned that statistic up as Wahoo Public. They had 10 at halftime. No matter what, still a big defensive series for the Cavaliers. Three. Bang down. There's Kelsey Morrissey again. Baseline J. Big shot. Needed that one bad by Morgan Hancock. He came without much time going off the clock, too. Not that time is a big issue right now, but certainly doesn't hurt for Wahoo to try to chip into this thing. Well, that was a big momentum shot right there because the first five points have been scored, and a double dribble has been called. That's once again, Maddie Murren forcing the issue on defense. Gets a huge turnover there. That's number 10 against the Cavaliers. I think Wahoo had, at times makes McKenzie Fuyan think twice about what she's going to do. Kind of uncharacteristic. A lot of times, Fuyan's very comfortable and confident when she handles the basketball. To tie. Yes, sir! Oh, you can't leave her open. This has turned out to be a fantastic basketball game, John, and we still have 2.13 to go. It was a 5-0 run to start the overtime by Bishop Newman. It's a 5-0 run the, the other way. And we are back to even here halfway through the extra period. Holly Fuyan, Mackenzie Fuyan. They look down low. There's Stanyak. She'll go to the line to shoot two. The foul will be on Walker. That's her second. Personal foul for the Cavaliers. Alyssa Stanyak shooting two shots. What a ball game. Back to a two-point Bishop Newman lead with a minute 50 to go in the extra period. Hancock all the way across the floor. Walker thought about it. Extending out that 1-3-1 again. Got to watch 
Lorenzo's hands, and this is going to be taken away. Fuyan, yes! It was either going to be an over or a back call, or it was going to be that. And now, all of a sudden, it's back to a two-possession game. Well, who needs a quick momentum killer again? Great ball movement. Will they get the shot? Yes, Hancock. Another clutch jumper from the baseline. And a timeout taken by Wahoo. Wahoo now, remember really in the overtime, sorry, Kevin, remember in the overtime, you do get a timeout back. So even though Wahoo exhausted all theirs in regulation, now they have burned it here in overtime. Right, Wahoo has really caught in fire here in overtime and then the final three minutes of the fourth quarter. That's really how they were able to push this thing into the extra session. And now we're seeing these jump shots fall. They just were not falling in the first half or actually the second quarter and the third quarter for the Warriors. But now they are. And you're able to see Wahoo compete at such a high level. Yeah, you're seeing the field goal percentages go up. They were in the upper 30s. Now Wahoo, 19 of 43 for 44%. Bishop Newman, 19 of 41 for 46%. So as the field goal percentages have gone up, the shots are falling down. And some clutch ones we have seen here in the last six minutes of actual game time. And when Bishop Newman has the basketball, I'm really starting to not even know what they're going to do with it because we're seeing Morrissey come up with these clutch buckets. A lot of times I'm thinking, you know, like you're dead set. It's going to go through Stanyuk and might be Fuyan, but you, just when you start to sleep on Morrissey, she comes up with a big shot. Did she, it in the fourth quarter, did it right at the start of OT. She does, but when you play without a shot clock and you've got 67 seconds left to a possible state title, I think that ball's got to eventually funnel through number 50. I, you would hope so if you're a Bishop Newman fan. If there are any shots taken beyond 12 feet and a timeout uh, taken is there was a lot Bishop of time Newman. being burned away in the backcourt. Ten second count was on. Bishop Newman has two timeouts remaining. Wahoo Public with no timeouts. But again, if you're taking anything, I don't care how open you are, if you're taking anything from 12 feet out at this point, I don't think you need to do that. I think it's got to go down to Stanyak because she's either going to get the two or she's going to go to the free throw line. Obviously, Bishop Newman wants to burn some clock at the same time as well, being cautious of the fact that Wahoo has been good at poking away a few steals here as those turnovers have come up. Remember, we talked in the first half, Kevin. Bishop Newman only had two first half turnovers. They now have 10. They've had eight here in the second half. Yeah, and I just think you don't have to shoot it from the inside. It just has to get in the inside. Because right. right. if Wahoo collapses on Stanyak, maybe Morrissey, Fuyan, Holly or McKenzie Fuyan are hanging out in that 12 to 15 foot range and they can knock down a big jump shot. But I think it's got to all work from inside out. Here we go. First, you got to get the ball in the front court, which they were having trouble with moments ago. And they will get it into the front court and nearly threw it away. Retrieved by Morgan Molly. So look at Wahoo, they're really active defensively. They're going to try to create a turnover. Almost got it. Sisters Murren again pounding. Mackenzie Fuyan up top. Newman going to space out the floor and burn clock. 35 seconds left. Wahoo's well, got to get up there and challenge. Because it looked like Newman was content to hold that thing for the remaining 35, which Wahoo will not have. Yeah, at this point, you're trading free throws for field goals, most likely, if you're Wahoo public. So get them to the line and don't let too much time burn off. Miss the first, though, Morrissey well, with those big threes. At the most, it'll be a three-point game, which means only one possession is really needed for Wahoo. Second one is good. 56, 53, by three, 30 seconds left. Huge threes in the second half. They're not going to give her much of an open look. She thought about it. There's Hancock for the tie. Weak side board, offensive putback is good with 13 seconds. Remember, no timeouts left. 10 seconds left. Time running off the clock. They have got to foul or get a quick steal. Time still running off the clock. And they finally get it as players go hard to the floor. Wow, did a lot of time go off the clock. And Sadie Murin. Riding in a little bit of pain, but look at how much time ran off the clock after that made shot, almost 10 full seconds. Yeah, you see Sadie Murren colliding with her own teammate, yeah. Hancock. Right around the neck, upper shoulder area. 
Now with five seconds left, you can't clinch it here. There's a two. Well, well five seconds is enough time for Wahoo to get the ball in bounds, run up the floor, and get off a three. No timeouts left for Wahoo. Bishop Newman is going to back everyone out to play defense. They don't want any cheap points in transition. This for a three-point lead. Wahoo needs, knows what it needs to do. Here comes Murray into the front court. To the corner. Walker has to put up a desperation three. And that's no good. And Bishop Newman wins the city battle and win it the state championship. It was a game that lived up to the hype, not only for that town, but for basketball fans across the entire state. Back with the medal presentations in a moment. Programming on NET television is provided in part by NPPD, Nebraska Public Power District, applauding the dedication, teamwork, and sportsmanship of Nebraska high school athletes. Nebraska Soybean Board, encouraging the use of renewable biodiesel fuels for a healthier environment. For information, nebraskasoybeans.org. Time Warner Cable, inspiring young people to build the skills they need in science, technology, engineering, and math to become the problem solvers of tomorrow. In overtime, Bishop Newman, 58, Wahoo, 55. Let's go across the way to Doc Weiniger and meet the state runners up. The Nebraska Coaches Association and the Nebraska Athletic Administrators Association are proud to support the positive aspects of high school athletics. Good sportsmanship is a key factor in our philosophy. And at this time, we are pleased to present the Class D1 Sportsmanship Award. Trophies are graciously donated by Awards Unlimited. Making the presentations are Chuck Ross of Wisner Pilger High School and Governor Dave Heineman of the great state of Nebraska. Presenting the trophy and representing the Nebraska Independent College Foundation is Jonathan Brand of Doan College. The Class D1 Sportsmanship Award winner is Elkhorn Valley High School. Receiving the award is Superintendent Ken Nabertil and students from Elkhorn Valley. Congratulations, Elkhorn Valley High School. And now to the C1 winner. The Class C1 Sportsmanship Award winner is Wahoo High School. <laughs> Receiving the award is Principal Chris Arndt and various students from Wahoo High School. Congratulations, Wahoo High School, winner of the C1 Sportsmanship Award. And now, the Nebraska School Activities Association is pleased to present medals and trophies to both of these outstanding teams. The awards will be presented by NSAA Board of Control members, Dr. Bob Reznicek, representing District 2 from Omaha West Side, and Dr. Dallas Watkins, representing District 5 from Dundee County Stratton. They will be assisted by U.S. Bank representative
number 54, Kayla Mika. Number 12, Alexis Oida. Number 14, Holly Fuyan. Number 22, Kelsey Morrissey. Number 40, Mackenzie Fuyan. And number 50, Alyssa Stanya. And now, all of you are welcome to receive the state championship trophy. Congratulations to the Cavaliers of Bishop Newman High School, the 2010 Class C1 State Basketball Champions. Back-to-back -back titles for the Cavaliers. They had to beat their crosstown rivals to accomplish the feat. And with that said, let's move across the way. Someone who beat Bishop Newman a few years ago to win her state title as a player but as a coach, we'll finish runner-up in her first championship game as a head coach. Let's head down courtside now with Dan Hedman. Coach, obviously not the outcome you wanted, but one heck of a game. Yeah, I'm, I am so proud of my girls. Um, we had a tremendous season. They played with their heart. They hustled. They took us into overtime when maybe it looked like, you know, the game was over. And that's just a characteristic of this team. The word we used all season was relentless. This team never gave up till the final seconds, till the buzzer. And I'm just so proud of them. And what is super nice is they're all coming back next year. When you needed a big shot, it seemed like Maddie Murren always stepped up. Just talk about the clutch shooters on your team just hitting shots down the stretch. Huge. We have scores all over our team, so it makes it difficult to guard us. But Maddie came through fourth quarter. She hit some big shots for us. Um, they all, you know, just stepped up their game. We've been using the word urgent when we need to all season, and that came into play today. What's this week been like for you in this town, especially for you nearly 20 years after you beat Bishop Newman in the finals? Yeah, it's, it's been awesome for our town. Um, really comes together when you got two solid teams playing in the championship C1 team. Goes into overtime, and you lose by, what, two points, three points, was it? I mean, that's incredible to have that much talent floating around in one small community of 4,000. All right, thanks, Coach. Great game and great season. Congratulations. We'll be back after a break to meet your Class C1 champs from Bishop Newman. Live coverage of the 2010 NSAA State High School Basketball Championships is brought to you in part by Southeast Community College offers more than 50 technical and academic transfer programs. Train for a new skill or retrain for an existing one. SCC provides hands-on learning. One Oak Energy Marketing. Natural gas from One Oak. The one in energy. Concordia University, Nebraska is a Christ-centered community ready to prepare students for a life of leadership and service. Where futures begin, community colleges, Central, Metro, Mid Plains, Northeast, Southeast, or Western Nebraska Community Colleges. Hello, I'm Jeff Beckman. What if I told you that you could ensure the future of NET television and enjoy a lifetime of steady income at the same time? Well, through an NET charitable gift annuity, your legacy will support NET programs into the future. Call or email me to learn more about NET charitable gift annuities. Celtic Thunder, it's entertainment. And he's a Celtic Thunder in an unforgettable concert performance. Celtic Thunder, it's entertainment. Sunday night at 8 Central Time on NET1.
Bishop Newman 58, Wahoo 55 in overtime. A fantastic basketball game, very well played. And even though Wahoo didn't get a chance to enjoy much of a lead at, at all in the second half, they really made a game of it, making a great comeback. You can see the difference in three-pointers, six of 17 versus two of eight for Bishop Newman. But the free throws were what made a big difference in the score. 18 free throws made for Bishop Newman out of 25. Wahoo was nine of 10, but that was a difference. Wahoo put Bishop Newman to the line far more times, and the Cavaliers did respond. They were led by Alyssa Stanyak with 25 points. The runners up led by Sadie Murren with 14. We'll meet the champions when we come back from the Devaney Center on NET and 1011. Thanks to the personal investment of more than 1,800 Sports Partners Club members, NET will deliver over 200 hours of exciting sports action this year. Who else brings you Husker Volleyball, Big Red Wrap-Up, and all of the other outstanding college and high school sports action to every home in Nebraska? NET is Nebraska's home for sports, and sports partners like you make it happen. Log on to netnebraska.org slash sportspartners and explore the many benefits of joining the Sports Partners Club. Blazing fastballs, spectacular strikeouts, fan pandemonium, and an eye-catching name. Take an intimate glimpse at Nebraska native and now New York Yankees pitcher Jabba Chamberlain, the people, places, and events which have influenced his road to success in Yesterday's The Jabba Chamberlain Story, Tuesday night at 7 Central on NET1 and NETHD. Plus, Jabba's father, Harlan, and Husker baseball coach, Mike Anderson, will be in the studio to let you know how you can get Husker baseball tickets and sign baseballs. Fifty eight fifty five Bishop Newman over Wahoo for the class C one championship head coach Rick Arns Rick congratulations second straight year of championship this one pretty tight contest you guys come out in the end though it was a great contest you know I got to give Wahoo a lot of credit uh, I thought every time we got a little gap on them, they come out and made a hit a big shot or made a big play and uh, you know two pretty even teams today and it showed by the overtime and just just a hard fought game how stressful was that for you as a coach fourth quarter seeing them make the run and then taking you guys into overtime and overtime there was little separation there throughout most of it. Uh, very stressful. You know, I just thought we did some things that almost cost us, but we hung on. And again, a, a credit to our girls that just keep fighting. You know, we didn't play perfect today, and uh, we just kept the course and just kept battling the whole time and uh, made some free throws down the stretch and made some plays and finally, finally won it in the end. What can you say about this team? You guys were near the top of the rankings throughout most of the season, and you cap it off with another title. Well, you know, just a great group of players, a uh, great group of seniors, you know, to get the finals three years in a row is just an amazing feat. And, you know, whether we won or lost today, I've been extremely proud of them just because, uh, you know, they do things the right way. They work very hard and they're good teammates and they treat each other well. And, you know, that's what coaching is all about. What was your experience like and, and the rest of the team, just the Wahoo versus Wahoo Newman in the state championship game? Well, you know, it was really big for our community. Uh, you know, we told our girls before the game, you know, it's just it's just another team. And, but, you know, obviously we know each other pretty well and, you know, there's a lot of people that are involved and, you know, it's a very emotional game for our fans, probably more so than our players. Our players, I thought, handled it really well, both teams, and uh, really played pretty good basketball. Good, Rick, congratulations. Right, thank, thank you very, very much. 58-55 again, uh, Bishop Newman over Wahoo. We'll hear from the players right after this. But my Daniel O'Donnell celebrates his 10th PBS special, showcasing two decades of career highlights. Daniel O'Donnell shares the sounds and the beauty of his homeland. Love sick fool, it's blind and just can't see. Coming Sunday, March 14th, beginning at 3.30 Central on NET1 and NETHD. Plus, find out how you can get tickets to his concert in Omaha. NPR News during the day and cool jazz at night on NET Radio's new channel, HD2. You can listen online anytime, anywhere, on our website, netnebraska.org radio. 
In the Lincoln area, you can also listen over the air using an HD radio. Find out more about this new jazz and news service from NET Radio on the web, netnebraska.org slash radio. It's a very happy group of Lady Cavaliers as Bishop Newman wins the Class C1 championship here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. Kelsey Morrissey, Kelsey, uh, pretty confident shooter. You took a couple big threes, especially late in regulation. What was going through your mind, and you know how'd that shot feel coming off? You know, all tournament I was struggling shooting him, but I kept shooting, and that one just fell. Your right role, time. your role seemed to be very important today because a lot of people I think were focusing on your teammate Stanyak and then Fuyan as well, and then you come up with a couple of huge buckets. What does that mean for you individually to come up and help the team that way? I don't know, just awesome. Anything to help the team. Excellent. Thank you very much. We'll now bring in Holly Fuyan. Holly, a big part of today's contest, especially defensively. This thing was a pretty entertaining game from our perspective. On the court, what was it like? Um, it was pretty intense, you know, friends from Wahoo. Friends? Yeah. Yeah, but but being able to beat them on this stage, what was it like to especially take down a, to take down a rival? Yeah, especially after sub districts and we lost them in the sub seven point five or the finals. Yeah, how much did that motivate you? That previous loss? Um, a lot. We really wanted to come back and hopefully play them again. We got to and. It all worked out. Awesome, Holly. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Alexis Woida now a senior, one of the seven seniors on this team. You get to go out as a consecutive champion. Following up last year with this, what does that mean? Um, that we just worked really hard to come back and do it again. It was... From a player's perspective, was this thing in doubt? You guys had a lot of timeouts and pressure situations. I mean, it was nip and tuck through uh, the end of regulation and overtime. What was it like being on the court in those tense situations? We knew it was going to be a tight one, and we just worked through it, and it was a lot of fun. We Perfect. Yeah, thank you very much. Congratulations. Mackenzie Fuyan, she gets to end her very impressive career with the state championship. You got the smile to show yeah. for it. What does this mean? Um, it's really big. I mean, especially coming back to back and coming off of that subject district loss. We uh, really just didn't want to be disappointed again, and that's, I think we did it. Your thoughts on beating Wahoo of all teams for, you know, the final game of your high school career? Um, it's definitely big. I mean, they've always been our rival. It, it's always bad to lose there and lose against them, and now we uh, get to go to, we don't have to go through the drive through at town. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much, Mackenzie. <laughs> we'll now bring in Elisa Stanyak. Uh, let's say 25 points. You really took this ball game over in the second half. Just talk us through how that evolved. Um, well, we knew that I wanted to be out there for the seniors because this is their last year, and I didn't want them to go home on second place because we all know who that, how that feels, and nobody likes that. So. But this is big for you individually to have a game like that, you know, in the state championship. Yeah, it's fun always, especially since it's against Wahoo, and I played with all the girls when I was little, so or, it's good. It's fun. Yeah, you get this, right? Yeah, we got this. Just talk, what does it mean in, in general terms just to win another championship? It's great. It's a lot better winning than it is losing, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, experience from a couple of years ago. So thank you very much. And again, the champions in class C1, Bishop Newman over Wahoo, 58-55. Thanks for joining us, and congratulations to the Class C1 champions. We'll be right back after this message. Hello, I'm Jeff Beckman, Executive Director of the NET Foundation. I'm joined here by Membership Director Jenny Herstein. Now, the action that you're watching now on NET is possible because of generous contributions from viewers just like you and from Nebraska businesses and foundations who believe that our coverage of high school sports is a critical component in our service to the state of Nebraska. Now, we understand the importance of sports to just about everyone in Nebraska. When we say that NET is Nebraska's home for sports, it's much more than a slogan to all of us here at NET. It's our privilege to provide exciting, high-definition coverage to every home in the state. Now, to show you how much we appreciate your passion and your loyalty and your support, and to give us a chance to get to know you better, we created the NET Sports Partners Club. Now, we're here now to invite you to become a member and to enjoy an amazing range of benefits. Jenny? 
Since we launched the Sports Partners Club in 2007, Jeff, over 1,800 Nebraskans have become members. We're grateful for that support, and we're glad that so many of you have realized the value of your investment in NET Sports. This year, the range of thank you gifts, special events, and glimpses behind the scenes at NET Sports will continue to expand. So whether you're a new or renewing member, now's the time to jump on the bandwagon and join the Sports Partners Club. Just in time to kick off the Husker baseball season with us at NET Sports Partners tailgate party on April 18th at Hawksfield in Lincoln. Contribute $80 and we'll thank you with two tickets to the Nebraska-Kansas game and two tailgate passes. Now, April 18th is the day after the red-white game, and the baseball team will play against Kansas. So if you're coming to Lincoln for that, it's a great chance just to extend your stay for a little while and make it a full weekend of outstanding Husker sports action. So please go right now to netnebraska.org slash sportspartners and explore all the benefits. We just can't do them justice in the short amount of time we have during the break. But you'll find everything you need at netnebraska.org slash sportspartners to reserve your season tickets for the best sports coverage available right in your own living room. Select the best gift level and assortment of thank you gifts to suit your budget and your interests. And hopefully we can coax you out of your living room from time to time so that we can see you at our sports partners events throughout the year. Starting with the sports partners tailgate party at Haymarket Park in Lincoln on April 18th. Now I hope to see you there. We'll bring the grill and the food. The Huskers are going to bring their game that day and the NET sports crew will deliver excitement to every home in Nebraska thanks to the support of sports partners like you. Log on now to Nebraska Stories Online, the place that gives you more insight about the people, the places, and the ideas of Nebraskans. Log on to netnebraska.org slash Nebraska Stories for extended video clips, articles, and information. Nebraska Stories and more now on the web. Blazing fastballs, spectacular strikeouts, fan pandemonium, and an eye-catching name. Take an intimate glimpse at Nebraska native and now New York Yankees pitcher Jabba Chamberlain, the people, places, and events which have influenced his road to success in Yesterday's The Jabba Chamberlain Story, Tuesday night at 7 Central on NET1 and NETHD. Plus, Jabba's father, Harlan, and Husker baseball coach, Mike Anderson, will be in the studio to let you know how you can get Husker baseball tickets and sign baseballs. A great second game here at the girls state championships as Bishop Newman outlasts Wahoo in overtime 58 to 55 to claim their second straight state title. Some of the highlights. What a great game right here. The shot that Titus and sent it into overtime. Sadie Murin working off the screen from Caitlin O'Brien. Also in the extra period Morgan Hancock had a couple of big jump shots from the baseline to keep her team close but some huge threes out of Kelsey Morrissey, two of them to be exact, got Bishop Newman off to a good start in the extra period. There's the All-Stater Mackenzie Fuyan, who closes out her career, finishing up in three title games, two championships, and there it is, Bishop Newman 